Our today's topic is the fossil in time and space and in which we will be discussing about the use of fossils in the discovery of biostratigraphy. The early paleontologist just like William Smith in Britain has done the work in the field of biostratigraphy. William Smith was a canal engineer and he his work was involved with the excavation of different sites in the Great Britain. During his work, he had other he had some, discovered some evidence of different fossils in the different layers of the earth. He said that there were assemblages of fossils in different layers. So that means the fossils were very much present in one layer were not present in another layer. That means the specific fossils were present in specific layers. The other uh, scientists such as George Cuvier, which was an anatomist, and Alexander Broniat, both were uh, belonging to France, and Alexander Broniat, wa uh, both of these scientists were uh, mollusk experts. Mollusks, you know that these are the soft-bodied shelled organisms uh, which are belonging to the phylum mollusca in the uh, animal kingdom. The William Smith's work was that he uh, examined the trilobite dominant assemblages in the England and Wales area and he discovered that different uh, trilobite dominated layers contained the different type of fossils. And same is the case with the QVR and Broniart. They compared the different strata in the Paris basin as they were belonging to the France. And they constructed some biological catastrophe, uh, they constructed some layers with the information of fossils in between them. And they said that these strata are differentiated, can, uh, these layers can be differentiated and separated into uh, individual layers and these individual layers are separated by the biological catastrophes. The biological catastrophes means that in those period of time there were a lot of uh, organisms were dying. That means there were some catastrophe in that time due to some climate change, due to some asteroid and these uh, were these different layers were separated by the biological catastrophe on the left side of the picture in this slide you can see a trilobite fossil the trilobite was as we have discussed earlier was a earlier mollusk who had some soft body and it was a shelled organism that's why its fossil remains were preserved and on the right side you can see the smiths famous 1815 geological map. During his surveys for the excavation of canals, he had some his own work on the field of paleontology as well in which he discovered different layers with the different type of fossils and on the basis of those fossils, he has categorized different layers in different areas with the different colors in this map. Then comes the work of John Philip. The John Philip was the one who was first to divide the great, great eras. Those great eras were Paleozoic, that means ancient life. Paleo means ancient, Zoic means life, right? So this is an era in which very, very uh, ancient organisms were present. And Paleozoic era, era contains those layers which are containing those very simple and ancient fossils. And then comes the Mesozoic. Meso means between, Zoic means life. So that means middle life, right? So those are the organisms which are comparatively complex as compared to the Paleozoic era, but they are more recent to the Paleozoic era as well. And then comes the last one, which is Cenozoic. Cenozoic means recent life, as the name indicates, that these were the most complex yet more recent organisms uh, which are and all of these three layers were separated by the 
uh, extinction events that means after the paleozoic there was a clear cut demarcation in which you can see a lot of fossils and after that you cannot see so much fossils that means the organisms which were present in the paleozoic era they have become extinct they are not anymore and after that new organisms evolved throughout the period and they form the mesozoic uh, life forms and so is the case when the mesozoic transitions into the cenozoic era and he also uh, gave some precise biotic and morphological changes along the phylogenetic lineages he constructed his information in such a way that he correlated that whenever an organism goes from the simple to the complex form uh, throughout the period of time uh, from the ancestor to descendant then you can see that how their morphologies change and those morphologies can be seen in lower layers these are the simple morphologies and as you go up and up in more recent layers the morphologies tend to complex and this is the correlation that we will be discussing next that how organism when they are you know in the ancient layers down layers they are more simple but when they go up in the layer uh, around uh, relatively in the older layer they become more and more complex so he uh, gave us accurate correlation using a wide uh, variety of fossil organism and of course from that time we have much more data and we have much more organism uh, fossil organisms uh, on hand through which we can analyze the different uh, uh, the correlation between that how the simple life forms evolve into complex forms and how the lower layers morphology changes to the upper recent layers now uh, we uh, as we have discussed that the biostratigraphy bio means life and stratigraphy means the study of layers how it correlates with the uh, life form changes right so the layers change and so does the life forms change so this is the correlation that we have to study and establish with the help of fossil evidence that we have so what is biostratigraphy biostratigraphy is the establishment of the fossil based successions and use in the stratigraphic correlations uh, fossil based successions means succession whenever something goes from simple to complex or other way around so succession can be positive succession or negative succession so in this uh, context we are using this in the form of positive succession the fossils which were uh, again which are found in the lower layer they are simple one but as they go up they become complex and now what is biozones the biozone is the main operational unit of the biostratigraphy so biostratic uh, the measurement of the stratigraphic ranges of fossils or assemblages of fossils form the basis for the definition of biozone so here you get the definition of uh, biozones that how the biozones are formed the uh, the known range of zone fossil is the time between its first and last appearance in the specific rock section so if someone ask you that what is a range of a fossil that means when an organism was formed and when an organism became extinct so it gives you a range and that range is called the range of zone fossil so first appearance datum and the last appearance datum we are not talking about first appearance we are talking about first appearance datum datum means datum is the singular of data that means a point which we have identified uh, in some layer we have identified a fossil first appearance of a fossil that is first appearance of datum we don't know that if that organism was present before that because the fossil of first organism cannot be preserved necessarily so is the case for the last appearance datum so that means the range of zone fossil is always small 
than the actual zone of appearance of that organism in the time. So it's, uh, we have established the uh, bio zones with the help of quantitative techniques to understand the relationships between rock thickness and time. And we have made links from locality to locality. And that is what we are doing in the field of uh, geology as well. Right, so we are identifying the layers, their thickness, and then we see that how old that particular layer is according to the thickness. Right, so if that layer is more thick, that means the more time has been uh, passed, and if that layer is less thick, then we can say that it was a very, very less time between the layer. So in this way, we can uh, identify the layers and we can uh, study the fossils in relation with the layers of the earth and that is called biostratigraphy.